सर वॉट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन पर्निशियस एनिमिया एंड मेगालोब्लास्टिक एनिमिया आई कीप गेटिंग दिस क्वेश्चन ऑल द टाइम एंड द रीजन इज ऑब्वियस बिकॉज देर इज अ कॉमन लिंक बिटवीन द टू द विटामिन बी ट्वेल्व डेफिशियंसी एंड देर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन ऑलवेज ऑकर्स इन द माइंड ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स सो लेट्स इन दिस वीडियो अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज कॉमन एंड वॉट इज डिफरेंट बिटवीन दीज टू टर्म्स टू बिगिन विथ लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड द लिटरल मीनिंग ऑफ दीज टू टाइप्स ऑफ अनिमिया Uh, anemia you are aware of that reduced hemoglobin reduced rbc count and therefore reduced oxygen carrying capacity of blood uh, what about pernicious pernicious anemia pernicious literally means uh, evil something which is of evil nature bad grave dangerous so this type of anemia is going to have very bad deleterious and evil uh, consequences on the body uh, one part of it can be the megaloblastic picture in the hematology investigations so uh, a pernicious anemia is a larger uh, uh, terminology or a larger disease and a part of it will be megaloblastic anemia the person the patient of pernici pernicious anemia will have megaloblasts in the peripheral blood what is megaloblasts uh, megaloblastic anemia rather mega is large blast is immature nucleated precursor cells rbcs so uh, megaloblastic anemia would have large cells the macrocytes and uh, immature uh, precursor rbcs in the circulation looking at it from other way round can megaloblastic anemia be an independent disease yes it does happen it can happen that in vitamin b12 deficiency uh, the only picture is that of anemia and a megaloblastic anemia without having the other manifestations of pernicious anemia so megaloblastic anemia can be classified categorized differently in the anemias without having the pernicious anemia picture so let's understand now in detail what is really the difference between the these two types of diseases or these two types of anemias uh of course you know the common link there is anemia in both these diseases there is vitamin b12 deficiency in both these diseases these two things are common since it is uh, b12 deficiency therefore let's have a quick look at uh, what are the reasons of vitamin b12 deficiency so let's see how vitamin b12 is handled by our body uh, there is vitamin b12 in the diet and we consume that it goes into the stomach now just to add uh, vitamin b12 sometimes is called as extrinsic factor of castle when it goes into the stomach the stomach lining has got parietal cell this parietal cell secretes uh, two things hcl and the intrinsic factor of castle so our b12 in the diet will bind with the intrinsic factor of castle then this complex vitamin b12 intrinsic factor complex will go all the way to the ileum from where b12 will be absorbed just adding a few points here why uh, ileum well uh, ileum has got receptors for vitamin b12 look uh, our nutrition nutrients in the diet they are getting absorbed from various uh, parts like uh, duodenum jejunum majority of them are from the jejunum of course some of them are from the duodenum and some nutrients like a uh, vitamin b12 is going to get absorbed from the uh, uh, ileum obviously all nutrients cannot be uh, getting absorbed from one place of the intestine so uh, it's a very scattered type of an absorption uh, now what is the requirement of the uh, intrinsic factor of castle even that needs to be understood we consume vitamin b12 in the diet now it is going to travel all the way uh, through the small intestine and finally it is going to be absorbed from terminal ileum that means it needs to be protected uh, uh, as it reaches the terminal ileum and this is where the role of intrinsic factor of castle uh, kicks in that is it takes the vitamin b12 through the small intestine in a protected manner uh, so that it reaches undigested uh, up to the terminal ileum and will get absorbed uh, from the terminal ileum so that's the role of intrinsic factor of castle without which b12 cannot be absorbed and there will be vitamin b12 deficiency so let's summarize uh, what what can be 
थ्री बिग रीजन ऑफ विटामिन बी ट्वेल्व डेफिशियंसी फर्स्ट बी ट्वेल्व डेफिशियंसी इन द डायट सो इफ द डायट डज नॉट है देर इज गोइंग टू बी डेफिशियंसी सेकेंड लैक ऑफ इंट्रेंसिक फैक्टर ऑफ कैसल दैट वुड बी द रीजन फॉर बी ट्वेल्व डेफिशियंसी एंड थर्ड विच इज नॉट सो कॉमन इज दैट फॉर इंस्टेंस इफ देर वॉज सर्जरी ऑन द ईलियम and uh, ileum has been surgically removed that means there are no vitamin b12 receptors now uh, in the intestine left because ileum has been surgically removed in that case there would be uh, deficiency of vitamin b12 so these two uh, three big reasons out of which we are interested here in the first two uh, deficiency of b12 in the diet and uh, resulting deficiency in the body uh, let me make a point here B12 deficiency is not likely to occur overnight or in uh, two or three days or two or three weeks. Body has got a tremendous pool or let's say a tremendous store storage of vitamin B12, particularly the liver, of course. So uh, a diet which is deficient in B12 for one or two years. I mean, if if somebody stops taking B12 now, then after one or two years maybe there would be a deficiency of b12 in the body so you see in that sense uh, it's a slightly a slower type of a uh, development it does not happen suddenly and of course the other uh, reason is lack of intrinsic factor of castle here let's talk about the pernicious anemia pernicious anemia is an autoimmune disease so auto uh, um, antibodies are developed against the parietal cell of the stomach we already saw that this cell uh, secretes hcl and intrinsic factor of castle now uh, with antibodies destroying the parietal cell there would not be hcl neither would there be vitamin uh, i beg your pardon uh, would be uh, no intrinsic factor as well okay so what are the symptoms what is likely to happen chronic atrophic gastritis there would be atrophy of the stomach lining uh, a chlorhydria absence of hcl chlorhydria that means hcl a chlorhydria absence of hcl uh, and the blood picture would be of megaloblasts because no b12 that means no uh, differentiation of the rbc's erythrocytes and therefore rbc's remain large we will see later why the rbc's are large and immature however the blood picture of the pernicious anemia is going to be the megaloblasts or megaloblastic anemia and uh, now coming to the important part nervous system involvement that is where you differentiate between a megaloblastic anemia and a pernicious anemia the pernicious anemia has nervous system involvement that is uh, peripheral neuropathy and the symptoms associated with uh, such a neuropathy so remember if ever you are asked in the viva what is the difference between pernicious and megaloblastic anemia uh, you would say pernicious anemia is a larger term it's a disease autoimmune disease and a part of it can be megaloblastic anemia the patient will have megaloblastic anemia but the patient will also have nervous system involvement that is when you call it as pernicious anemia and of course autoimmune uh, disease and other things whereas the megaloblastic anemia independently can be a disease without this autoimmune involvement just the deficiency of b12 as we saw let's say for um, uh, deficiency in the diet or the the reasons uh, similar right so um, let's see what happens in the megaloblastic anemia what is the megaloblastic anemia the blood picture or uh, pernicious anemia having megaloblasts as the peripheral blood picture uh there are megaloblasts we have already uh, we saw this just now mega is large blast is immature precursor rbc's so there are megaloblasts found in the bone marrow and they would be early megaloblast intermediate uh, or late megaloblast they are larger than their corresponding normoblast if you remember the erythropoiesis uh, it has stages like proerythroblast then early intermediate and late normoblast so instead now in the bone marrow there would be these stages 
early, intermediate and late megaloblasts. Uh, abnormal, immature, nucleated erythroid cells. Erythroid cells. You know already that the RBCs are non-nucleated, but the precursor cells, precursors of the RBCs are nucleated. So you will find nucleated erythroid cells or uh, erythrocytes, immature RBCs in the bone marrow. Now cytoplasm is filled with hemoglobin. This is an important aspect of uh, the megaloblasts. Cytoplasm is filled with hemoglobin. So how it affects the uh, blood indices? We will see that. Late megaloblast finally loses its nucleus like in the case of late normoblast. Finally the nucleus will be lost and we see in the peripheral blood a macrocyte. It may be non-nucleated but a very large cell, very large RBC filled with lot of hemoglobin. That would be a macrocyte. However, the problem is the cell number would be very low and the reason being since there was no nuclear maturation, the cell division will be affected. If the cells are dividing very slowly, the number will not increase and therefore it results in anemia. So point is, although these cells have hemoglobin, but it's less uh, as compared to the body's requirement because the cell number itself is less. So eventually uh, hemoglobin also is going to be less. Diameter 8.2 microns, but uh, mean corpuscular volume, check that, mean corpuscular volume is 95 to 160 cubic microns. Normally, it is 78 to 94 cubic microns. Here, it's almost double that size. And MCH, MCH 50 picograms. I want you to focus on this. Uh, normally, the mean corpuscular hemoglobin is in the range of uh, 28 to 32 pico, uh, picograms. Here it's again double that amount. Uh, and MCHC is normal. See, the point is that the cell is large, but it is uh, well saturated with the amount of hemoglobin that is present. And therefore, uh, MCHC is normal. And if ever you are asked this question, if the MCH is high, but MCHC is normal, it is the megaloblast. Now, uh, increased amount of hemoglobin is distributed throughout the cell. And therefore, uh, MCHC almost remains normal. Uh, what happens uh, uh, that results in anemia is point number one, cells are not dividing rapidly and therefore the number will be less. Plus, the cells are larger and therefore they are easily destroyed. Uh, and therefore, consequently, you see hemolytic anemia and uh, because of the excessive uh, hemoglobin release resulting in formation of bilirubin and jaundice. So, technically speaking, you could call it uh, nutritional deficiency anemia because it is happening from uh, deficiency of B12 or you can call it hemolytic anemia. Apart from that, there would also be granulocytopenia, granulocytes would be less in number and thrombocytopenia, platelets will be less in number because ma majority of the part of the bone marrow has been occupied uh, by the erythroid precursors and therefore uh, there, this uh, likely to be the less number of uh, granulocytes and thrombocytes. Now, the pathophysiology part of it. Why do we see such large immature cells with the deficiency of B12? There is deranged DNA synthesis because vitamin B12 and folic acid are required for nuclear maturation in the RBC precursors. So, B12 and folate they first form a 5,10 dimethyl tetrahydrofolate and then for eventually there is formation of thymidylate and then uh, you know this is the nuclear maturation stage. Uh, thymidylate is a nucleotide of thymine. Now the point that to be uh, is to be noted here is that thymidylate is found in DNA but not in the RNA. So what am I trying to suggest here is that DNA synthesis has got hampered, so therefore the cell division is not going to be proper and therefore number will be less. But 
RNA formation was not hampered, therefore the cytoplasm can grow. And that is the problem here, that the RNA synthesis is unimpaired and cytoplasm grows. Plus whatever hemoglobin was available was distributed among this less number of cells and therefore cells are occupied pretty much with the hemoglobin and therefore uh, MCHC also is in the normal range. That was the pathophysiology. Finally, let's say the let's see the uh, clinical features of the pernicious anemia. Now the patient is anemic, so there is going to be weakness, lassitude, shortness of breath. These are the symptoms commonly seen in any type of anemia. Now apart from that, what's the pernicious part of it? Anemia, fine. Anemia is anyways is uh, not a good thing for the body. But what's pernicious evil, more evil than anemia is demyelination. Demyelination particularly of the peripheral nerves resulting in the peripheral neuropathy. Peripheral neuropathy has got the symptoms like uh, tingling and numbness and uh, because of the demyelination finally uh, it results in subacute combined degeneration of the cord. Combined is means sensory as well as motor neurons so combined uh, degeneration in the spinal cord. These are the evil or pernicious features due to which uh, reason it's called as the pernicious anemia. So, to summarize pernicious anemia, autoimmune disease, uh, antibodies destroy the parietal cell, therefore there is no HCL and there is no intrinsic factor of castle resulting in the deficiency of B12. B12 was also required uh, at, a, at a certain minimum level for Schwann cell proliferation apart from the uh, of course uh, RBC nuclear maturation. So, uh, there would be anemia, megaloblastic anemia and the features related to the peripheral nervous system and uh, degeneration in the spinal cord. That's pernicious anemia. The blood picture of that will be the megaloblastic anemia. That's uh, uh, the link between the two and uh, the megaloblastic anemia can happen independently without uh, actually having some autoimmune involvement, just the deficiency in the diet or deficiency in the absorption of B12 can result in only the megaloblastic anemia without uh, even nervous involvement. So that's the common link between these two uh, types of anemias and the differences between the two uh, which we saw uh, here with pathophysiology and other manifestations.